My name is Adi Muniz. I'm the founder of uh, the UK's largest Muslim website called singlemuslim.com. And I'm also the chairman and the founder of Penny Peel, uh, which is an international NGO, non-government organization. It's one of the fastest growing charities in the UK. And we work in over 30 countries worldwide. We're also Guinness World Record holders for the charity as well. And most recently, we've been doing a lot more work domestically here at home. In the early days, it literally was myself, and then we, then we had other people that came on board. We had IT people come on board, we had design people come on board, we had marketing experts come on board. And I, I, I just, even today and now, we've got a huge team. We've got a team that's, that spreads America, Australia, Africa. But we were so blessed, there was just something in the air, there was just something, look, whatever you call it. The, the people that we've met on our journey, the people that I spoke to, the people that actually wanted to come and become part of the team, were just experts in what they were, what they were doing and they're still with me. And my core people from nearly two decades are still with me right now and they're at the top of what they do. You know, as, as you go through such a long, long time, there's a lot of people that come in and a lot of people that come in and out of the business. But we were just so blessed at the beginning of the journey that when we met the individual that we met by accident, I met one of my first clients at Staples. You know, I just bumped into him. We were queuing up and he was, he was he, you know, he was a bit of a, a, a chatty, gobby salesperson. He was like, I can't believe the print is so expensive. I'm not paying this much money for the print. And I said to him, you know, uh, excuse me, sir, would you mind if I can give you an idea, why don't you put this online? And he's like, what are you talking about? I said, put it online. And if you want, if you're looking for a catalog, why don't you put it onto a CD? And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about, but it made sense to him. So he says, young man, give me your number. Uh, so he took my number, went back and spoke to his CEO. Within like half an hour, I didn't even get back to the office, within half an hour he called me and he said, my CEO wants to speak to you. And that was it, you know, he, he's, still, he's still part of the journey, he's still part of the team. And it was just meeting those right people at the right time. And it just looking back on it now, I'm thinking to myself, how on earth did we do that? Because now we literally pay agencies tens of thousands of pounds for recruitment. Is the CV right? Is the interview right? Is the second stage interview right? It's, it's like now we're trying to build this, you know, trying to work out the science of recruiting good. But back in the day, you know, it was just, you know, people just fell into your life and people started to believe in your vision. And as corny as it sounds, and I say it now, I said, you know, teamwork makes a dream work. I've got a dream, I've got a vision, but it's not my dream and it's not my vision anymore. It's a dream of the, the, the whole team and it's a vision. My vision goes up to here, but with my team on board, my vi that vision that I can see here is actually here and it's a lot sharper as well because everybody, everybody else that's involved. The one key thing I look for in an, in, an, in an individual when I'm recruiting is passion. Passion and enthusiasm. Because like me, you know, if, you're, if, if you enjoy what you're doing, you'll never work a day in your life. It's as, it's as, it's as much as that. And we, when we've recruited people and they're like, Adeem, I really want to do this. And I'm doing this now, but I think I could do this. And I'm, you know, I'm like, okay, we can, we can get you on board and you can do that what you want to do. I'm like, that what they want to do and that what they love doing is going to be fun for them as well. It's easy to train people, it's easy to go onto a, an Excel course and it's easy to get people learning Java and learning this language and la that language and, and going through you know, processes of this is how you set up this hardware, this is how you set up this manual and so on and so forth. But you can't really train people to have that passion, you can't really train people to have that dream, you can't really train people to be enthusiastic about what they do. So having those core passions and enthusiasms for what they do and having that love for what they do is really what I look for in, in, in recruiting the right person. If you walk around the office, only, only a couple of years ago, somebody actually pointed out to me, said, Adeem, it's, it's amazing because you've got people that work here that are, that are you know, Muslims, that are Asians, that are black, that are from Middle Eastern background and so on and so forth. And I was like, you know what, you're actually right. And I went back and I did a little exercise. We've got people from 13 different nationalities that work there. And you know, I don't have family members there, brothers, sisters, you know, uncles, aunts, they don't work there not because I don't love them, not because I don't care for them, but because they're not the best for the job. It doesn't matter what you believe in, I don't care what you believe in, I don't, don't care if you're straight, I don't care if you're gay, I don't care what you do in your per that's your personal choice, that's what you do in your personal life, it doesn't matter, as long as you're the best at what you do, you know, we, we want you to be part of our team because we want our team to be the best at what it is. And it's a, you know, even internally it's a competition. Everybody loves what they do and everybody wants to improve what they do and get better at what they do as well. And our t team certainly has proven that. You know, we've had takeover deals from Silicon Valley. We've had people who are uh, wanting to, to buy us out from Gold Coast in Australia. We've got, you know, we're really an, an exemplary 
uh, business uh, in terms of what we do digitally and in the digital space. We've got our own hardware, we've got our own internal data center as well. So it's, it's amazing and it's a real buzz to work at that level. And, it's, and, I, and I think that's the, that's the buzz and that's the vibe that you get within the team as well. A wise person once said to me, is if you're, and I don't play cards, so if you're playing cards, you don't look at the chips that are on the table, you look at the hand. Because if, you, if you're playing a good hand, all the chips on the table are yours. So I take that kind of, that's my model in terms of business. If you do what you're doing well, the success is going to be yours. Whatever's out there is going to be yours. So enjoy and do what you're doing to the best of your ability and you'll clean up. So that really kind of struck home and the team that I have, they're like, Adeem, why are you visiting this business for? And why are you visiting that business for? You know, they're not competition and they're too big for us and they're like this and they're like that. And I'm like, I'm only visiting these businesses to actually see, put ourselves against them. So I want to know how our IT team is doing against their IT team. I mean, I want to know how our marketing team is working against their marketing team. I just want to go into an established business, a big brand, a blue chip company, and actually see behind behind the door, behind the skin in terms of how it operates. And nine out of 10, I went in and I'm like, we're doing that better. We're doing that better. We, we can do that. We've done that. We're there. We're doing this. And I'm like, and it was, I know it's always come out and I used to be like, okay, now, now I know that we're, we're all right. You know what I mean? It's not like, because you don't, you don't have like this, this is what you need to do and this is what you need to do. Because you're operating in a way that you don't have a, a template, you don't have, you know, we, we stumble and we kind of, you know, fall and pick ourselves up and you're doing what you're doing and you're doing it to the best of your ability and you know that there's a, there's a space in the market where you want to fit in, but are you doing the best in terms of being fair to the people that are working with you, being fair to the partners and doing the best job for your clients? And I guess that's where I got that check and balance and that's where I kind of got my reassurance that you know we were we were in a good we were in a good place.